Hello, I am Elise. Welcome to the video. Today we're going to be doing my first ever vlog. I'm scared. Know that going in. Vlogs seem very intimidating to me, but you know, we move. We're going to roll with it. So the vlog I'm going to be doing is the Wit Readathon. So I'm going to be vlogging my experience of that. I have four books that I'm planning on reading which like narrative voice she will not do because I have three days to read them. So I'm starting this vlog on the 12th and the readathon ends the 14th. So I have three days <laughs> to read four books which is probably not going to happen. Uh, if you are interested in getting more information about the books I'm going to be reading, I have a separate TBR video that's up. I'll link it down below. Um, so I'm going to show them really quickly here. These are the four books I will be reading, but if you want to see a full synopsis, go view that video because um, I already think this might be really long. So again, scared. So I'm going to go ahead and dive right in because we're on the clock. We're running late. So the first book I will be starting is An Elderly Lady Must Not Be Crossed. And this is by Helene Turston, translated from the Swedish by Marlene Dellergy. And this is fulfilling the prompt of reading a women in translated author that you've already read before. This is the sequel to An Elderly Lady is Up to No Good that I've previously read, I think maybe a couple years ago now. Um, so this is a short story collection all about Maude, our 88 year old badass woman who loves her apartment is going to kill anyone that gets in her way of having some peace and quiet in her apartment. So I will say right off the bat, I am going to be talking about what is in this book. It is technically a sequel. So I don't think that talking about what is in this is a spoiler because while they are interconnected short stories, they're pretty formulaic in what they're trying to do, like they're crime stories. So while I personally don't think it's a spoiler, if you think it will be a spoiler for you, feel free to skip through what I'm talking about in here. But I am gonna be discussing the stories that I'm reading. So I have read the very first story in this so far, and this is six stories, if I haven't already said that. Um, and the first story picks up right where the last book leaves off, um, kind of, maybe like one or two days later. So Maude is going on a trip, y'all. She is going on a very like luxury trip um, and is gonna go on like safari. Is she going on safari? Something like that. I'll correct it later if that's wrong. Um, and she is flying to like the first destination of this trip to meet up with her tour group. And while she's flying, she's sort of having flashbacks. She's going back to the few previous days in which the police who are investigating one of the murders that happened in her building that she did. And the police have decided to come back and question her a bit more about what happened because the murder took place in her apartment. So she's recalling that memory. You're getting some more information on what they're asking her. Um, and also she's about to embark on this luxury trip for herself. So that was the first story. I'm going to read the next two stories. So then I've read the first three, which will be half of them. And then I will check back in with you and see how it goes. So I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, we are back. I've read the first three stories, so technically half of the story. So I'm not gonna give away the plot of each story, but I will tell you a little bit about like the overarching plot that's happening in this. So I should have noticed this sooner, but each story, um, or at least the first five stories, are all going to be taking place in the past. So in Maude's past, she's kind of having like flashbacks and dreams while she's on a flight to go on her trip. So all of this is happening within the flight and all of it is memories. 
sorry, there was a butterfly outside the window and I thought it was a dog for a sec. I don't know how that happens, but whatever. Um, so yeah, those are the first five stories and similar to the first one. And again, this is not a spoiler, you know this going in, each story contains a murder, right? So the same in the first book, same for this book, each kind of memory contains a murder. And then the last story, which is actually a hundred pages, so it's like almost like a novella, is I think going to be about the trip. So it's going to be the only story in present day. So that's what I've learned so far. In true mod fashion, um, you know, a murder takes place in each story and she's very like logical and calculated about it and almost seems to be like trying to convince you that it makes sense that these people get murdered. So enjoying that and I will read the next three stories and then give you my overall review at the end. I'm about to head out to walk my dog. It's a beautiful sunny day. So, you know, if I'm feeling so inclined for my first vlog, maybe I'll try and get some B-roll. Who knows what's gonna happen. I also don't know when I'm gonna update you next because I'm having a few friends over tonight for a board game night. So we shall see. I'm gonna try and read this before then so I can give my review before all that starts, but I don't really know. So enjoying it so far and I will be back. If I'm talking a little bit quietly, it's because my husband is sleeping in the room next door and I'm trying not to wake him, but hopefully you can still hear me and it's going to be okay. Um, I'm also still in my pajamas because I don't want to go in the room and get actual clothes on. So um, I today is Sunday. I last updated you on Friday, so I didn't give you any updates yesterday. I did read yesterday but didn't have time to film any updates. So this will be a little bit longer of an update because I finished An Elderly Lady Must Not Be Crossed and then I also started Blood Feast. So I'll be talking about both of them. Um, I will start off by going over An Elderly Lady Must Not Be Crossed. And this was really good. I very much enjoyed it. I think I might have even enjoyed this better than the first one. Um, so I'm giving this four stars. Um, I think there's six stories overall. And like I said, the first five are all taking place in the past. And then the last one is really like a novella. It's a hundred pages and takes place in present day for Maude as she's going on safari. I can confirm it was indeed safari that she was going on. So this was very good. Um, the past was all about like classic mod style of like a murder taking place in all of them in which, you know, mod feels like she has logical reasons of why these murders need to take place and why they need to happen. Um, so I enjoyed that aspect of it. But really, I think where this book shines is in the novella. The novella was fantastic. Um, I think that it was just the right length and you really got like the atmospheric quality of being in South Africa, being on safari um, and everything that comes along with that. So the heat, the animals, the vegetation. Um, in addition to that, she's on a tour group and there are seven people in this tour group and there's a guide and a driver. So that's kind of our cast of characters for this. And um, they start going on the tour, everything's fine. And then all of a sudden at one of their stops, something happens with a young local girl in the area that they're stopping in. So there are detectives that come and interview everyone trying to see what happened, but ultimately nothing is figured out. And then later on, you start to realize that maybe someone in this tour group 
is doing something at the stops that they are going to. So Maud is sort of getting wrapped up in that and you're trying to figure out what is happening. This has a really, really heartwarming ending. It was like very precious and I loved it. I thought it was a great way for kind of this story to wrap up. I don't know if there's gonna be a next one or not, um, but this was really enjoyable and if you liked reading the first one, I would highly recommend this. And if you haven't read the first one yet, I would really encourage you to pick that one up. I do think you can read them out of order, but it will give you some additional mod context to read the first one before you get to this one. So highly recommend this one and really enjoyed it. Then I started Blood Feast yesterday and I'm actually most of the way into it. It looks like I'm only about halfway because the last like 75 pages is a note from the translator, which I am planning on reading, but that's not actually any of the stories. So I think as far as the short stories go, I only have three or four left. Let's see, yeah, I only have four left. Um, and this I'm overall enjoying, but I'm not loving it. I don't think ultimately these stories will stay with me for very long. Um, but each one is like well written and engaging in the moment. There's just not a lot that I'm taking away from them, which is totally fine. Still an enjoyable read. Um, I A couple of the stories that I have really enjoyed is the one about the mom trying to uh, get her daughter to pass a virginity test and kind of like the unfolding of like the, the past of why the daughter maybe needs help passing a virginity test. That's the very first story and I thought that story was great. Um, also the titular story, Blood Feast, um, which I believe is the longest story in here, um, was really interesting. It was about this man who is sort of disillusioned with his wife. A really interesting thing about this is I'm listening to the audiobook of this in addition to reading it physically and each story has a different narrator. So it's very easy to tell when like the gender of the narrator changes or like the tone of the narrator changes because it's a completely different actor doing the story, which I very much like. Um, and we do, it comes from a really wide range of characters that the stories are coming from. So I am enjoying this overall. I'm excited to see what the last few stories have to bring. And you know, I picked this up for the prompt because I'm returning to a country that I've been to before, which is Morocco. And there are like so many little like wonderful memories of being in Morocco that are coming to me from reading this. Obviously there's the, the, the more like day-to-day -day small things like mint tea, which really nowhere else in the world does it like Morocco. It, I have tried to have it lots of other places. It's never the same. So that has been really nice. But even talking about like some of the cobblestone streets and going to the market and things like that, like it really is just taking me back to like my time there and what that was like. And it's been almost 10 years since I was there. So that has been a really enjoyable personal part of reading this for me. So I will finish this up and check back in with you later and let you know how it goes. Um, the readathon is technically supposed to be ending today. I'm not going to be able to finish this and read two other books today, but I do really want to get to Boulder. So I'm going to read Boulder in this readathon video regardless of how long it takes me so I might go into tomorrow to finish it up as far as the group read goes uh, field work in Ukrainian sex I do really want to read that as well but I don't want this video to be like way 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 late so I might do a separate video for that I'm not sure we'll see how we're feeling and how quickly I'm reading through these um, but for now what I'm gonna leave you with is a part of why I can film yesterday as I was going to a friend's birthday dinner and it was a very very gorgeous spot for us to have a birthday dinner so I will insert some b-roll of that so you can see what we got up to there and then I will be back to check in about Blood Feast so I'll see you then
pajamas as you can see it is Monday morning so we have that bright morning light coming in um, so I did read more yesterday story of my life but didn't have time to film an update so I'm gonna tell you now what I got up to yesterday so yesterday I think I updated you sometime in the morning um, and then later on in the day I finished Blood Feast um, so I had read most of it the last time I updated you so not much has changed in regards to the way that I feel about the stories I only had three more to read um, but there is a very lengthy uh, kind of letter from the translator who is Alice Guthrie in the back of this book and I do think that provides some really helpful context to the author's life and how their circumstances have informed the stories within the novel that is very interesting so i'd highly recommend if you're picking up this edition to read that i do think it's it's just as important as reading the stories is to read the letter from the translator at the end so again overall the stories i thought were written very well i think um and i should say this author has passed away. So I believe they passed away in 2006. Don't quote me on that, but I, I think that might be the year that they passed away. Um, and basically within these stories, there's a lot of marginalized characters. So this author was mainly writing in the 90s in Morocco. Um, and most of the stories are from that time. There's some from a little bit before and some from a little bit after, but most of them are in the 90s. And um, in these stories, there's you know, there's an intersex and or trans character, it's not really named. Um, there are lots of queer characters. You get some descriptions about people like having online sex when that was first just a thing, like when the internet was first coming out. Um, and you get a lot of like women who have been, you know, marginalized by society trying to push back in some way. So I really appreciated all of that representation and I think she was very ahead of her time for that for being in Morocco. So another contextual thing with this is like this author died pretty young and they were having kidney complications and couldn't afford treatment and the state refused to provide her treatment, most likely because the controversial short stories that she was writing. So throughout her career she really had decided that her work was killing her, literally and figuratively, um, and that, that heavily contributed to her early death. So all of that is very interesting, her herself having like a chronic illness um, and that informing the book. There's a lot of despair in the book and kind of being stuck in certain situations. So that definitely comes across. And again, I enjoyed the writing overall enjoyed the stories. I just don't think the stories are going to stick with me for that long. Um, but again, that might be a personal thing. If any of the stories I've talked about sound interesting to you, I definitely highly encourage you to pick this up. And I do think the writing is like worth the read alone, whether or not they stay with me for a long time. So that is Blood Beast. And then I also started Boulder and I'm one fourth of the way through and the first fourth of the book is just the first chapter it's only 105 pages so it's pretty short and this is stunning so far the writing is absolutely gorgeous it's very like sparse yet lyrical prose and there's a lot of metaphor in it um so like the ship that she's working on is like a womb um and it's like a life force for all of the crew on the ship and things like that. So this story, we follow who we come to know as Boulder, but at the beginning of the novel, they're unnamed. And then they meet Samsa and uh, Samsa gives her the name Boulder. So it very much represents this like defining moment in her life when she meets Samsa. Like Samsa is the one that provides the name for the story. Um, so basically Boulder is a line cook and has worked in like lots of various places all around the world, is really like struggling to keep a job and it's really it's just because she doesn't want to stay there. She gets bored of it and wants to leave. Um, and 
and ends up finding herself on a ship and she really loves working on this ship. She finally feels like content in where she's supposed to be and she loves kind of like just the exhaustion of her days and life slowly unfolding for her. And then when they're docked at a place that they typically dock at, I think it's in Chile, um, they go off the boat and meet Samsa and end up falling in love with them. At the end of the first chapter, Samsa has just told Boulder that they are going to be leaving because they just got a really good job opportunity in Reykjavik and unspokenly, you know, wants Boulder to come and Boulder makes the decision that she's in love with her and she's going to go with her. So that's really the first chapter. That's where I'm at and I think the story is going to unfold from there. So I'm very excited to keep going with this. It's really, really good so far and I'm looking forward to reading it and I will check back in with you, you know, probably when I've finished it. If something crazy happens at some point in the book, I might check in with you again, but most likely I'll check with you in with you when I'm done. So I'll see you in a little bit. because like she's not like other booktubers because she don't know how to vlog um, but I first of all didn't explain the clips that you just saw so if you just watch that b-roll footage um, I haven't mentioned that I live in Seattle so if you knew where we were props to you um, but we were at Pike Place Market which is a very famous market in Seattle where they throw the fish um, my husband and I went to dinner there and then afterwards we went to a Sounders game, which if you're like, what's a Sounders game? That is the Seattle MLS team. And if you're like, what's an MLS team? That is soccer in the US. So we went to the Sounders game, love the Sounders. They're my soccer team. So that was a little clip you got to see. Other thing I need to confess that makes me bad at vlogging is I haven't updated you in over a week. I think it's been like eight days or something like that. Who knows? Um, yeah, I think I last updated you on like Monday or Tuesday of last week. It is Tuesday of the next week. And basically I didn't read for like three or four days. And then I did finish Boulder on Friday, which is what I was reading when you last saw me. And then I finished it like 30 minutes before I had to leave to catch a flight to go to California for my lovely friend Kat's wedding reception. So yeah, there have been no updates. I just flew back in last night. So I figured I would give you the last update on Boulder now. Um, and I hopefully remember it all. <laughs> so I read the last half of this on Friday. And overall, I really, really enjoyed this book. I think in the last uh, clip, I was telling you that the writing is lovely and it is and continued to be that way. Um, I definitely wanna read more by this author in the future. I think that this had such fascinating and differing views on like womanhood and motherhood and the way that you're viewed as a woman with and without children and what power that may or may not give you in society and like conventionality as a woman. Um, I really enjoyed those varying perspectives because there are varying perspectives in here on that. Um, I also appreciated the ideas on motherhood and the wide range of what it means to be a good mother and there are so many different ways to be a mother um, and we get to see some different perspectives on that as well. I think it's also really unique that we get this whole story from the perspective of Boulder um, instead of from Boulder and Samsa, even though Samsa is just as much a part of the story as Boulder is, especially because Samsa 
has more say in their relationship, but it's kind of flipped in this narrative because Boulder actually gets to have her story and her say, whereas in their relationship, Sam says really the dominating narrative that you get. So I really enjoyed that juxtaposition of like the two dominant narratives and enjoyed what the author was doing with that. Overall, I really love this. The only thing that I didn't love is the ending and it's not like where the story ended per se it's more how we got there so this book is really short it's only 105 pages and you know we get to like the last I don't know 10 15 20 pages and it's a huge shift of like okay and here's where it ends up and I just felt like we missed so much leading up to that that would have informed and impacted the story and it didn't quite sell it for me and because we didn't get that extra exposition of how we got there so it was just like okay we ended up here fine I'm fine with that but like I would have all all the juicy bits were in the middle I feel and we kind of lost that so that was the only thing I disliked but again I, I really did love this I thought the writing was just superb and I really loved all the commentary on the themes that we got to explore. So I definitely will be picking up from this author again. And with that, my friends, we can cover what we have done in this vlog. So we read three books. We read An Elderly Lady Must Not Be Crossed, Blood Feast, and Boulder. I really enjoyed my reading experiences with all of them. Um, we did not get to field work in Ukrainian sex. But I will be getting to this at some point. I do still want to read it, um, but it just won't be in this vlog. If I read it by the end of the month, it'll be my wrap up. Um, but I will read it before the live show in September. So I'll link info about that down below if you're interested in joining that as well. So we did it. First vlog, done. Like who knows how this went we will see um but let me know a couple of things first i want to know if you've read any of these books what did you think of them i am very intrigued um also if you're interested in picking up any of these books now let me know what made you interested to pick them up i'm very curious about why people choose to pick up certain books so i want to know that as well and lastly because my first vlog if there are you know comments opinions questions any information you want to give about what you might want to see in a next vlog please let me know i have no idea what people are even interested in seeing like i could just talk about the books and i'd be so happy doing that um or if people want longer b-roll i could maybe do that so just let me know what your thoughts are about vlogs in general and what you would maybe potentially like to see in a vlog because um, I may or may not want to do another one. We shall see. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.